Hello and welcome to an open source live code hangout. We'll be working today in the Godot engine, creating a piano practice game. We've got a task and pull request open. <clears throat> Let's run the game real quick and take a quick peek at what we've got so far. The game is essentially going to help players learn piano technique more or less the scales chords chord inversions those levels of technique so when you play notes on your midi connected piano this is a key thing it'll highlight the notes that you're pressing and it'll tell you the note names right now including the in harmonics or the accidentals <clears throat> everything is sharp right now i'm not pitch smelling the chords at this point so you can have a D yeah sharp well there we go so it's um, working pretty well and uh, it displays the pitch class <clears throat> so not the actual octave although we do have that information so before I'm finishing with this particular pull request I would like to maybe make some small adjustments Let's see what it looks like on a smaller screen. Okay, so one thing is uh, it's not really responsive to screen resize. So in fact, I don't think it can be. So I'll have to create an issue for that. <clears throat> what to do if or when the screen resizes. <laughs> <clears throat> At this point, it's, though, it's a useful app that can help you. Uh, for example, if you're a piano instructor, you can show which chords to press and what the notes are. Later we can expand that and show a clef here, a couple of clefs, and put the notes on the staff basically. Um, other ideas that are coming to mind would be <clears throat> taking uh, spelling the chords, D minor, D major, chord spellings, uh, playing a sound when keys are pressed. Uh, right now I'm using a MIDI controller, there's no sound anywhere aside from the background music but it's not uh, coming from this app so yeah the first step is just to display the note names and pitch classes above the piano which is basically synonymous with the note names uh, GPT wrote this Yes, so we have done some refactoring during this pull request and I have a main scene with two ch uh, children. So the main scene contains the note display and the piano display. The note display, <clears throat> if I edit that scene, contains just this label, which essentially I have not modified, so it's just text. And I'm wondering how to display, how to change the displayed text. <clears throat> For example, If I want to display it in 24 pixel font, yeah, that makes sense. Now it's anchored to a particular point, so they're always displaying from here over. No matter how big the chord is, you know, I could have basically all 12 notes playing. <clears throat> which is fine for now, I suppose.
Now, how do I make the background? For a 2D node. White. I suppose the gray is okay. It just looks a little bland. One plus the text is white, so maybe we would want... I don't know. Different color, at least. So let's see. Oh, let's try GPT. Blue might be nice. I don't know, blue, green. We could even give the player a, an option to choose their own background color. Hmm, rose lemonade. Hmm, tangy. Open the project settings. <coughs> oh, really, the project settings. Navigate to the environment settings. A lot of this information comes from the um, good old three environment. Do you see environment rendering physics? Is it a sub project settings? Environment rendering. Default clear color property. Here we go. Internationalization. Oh, found it. Environment. Default clear color. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll be. Well, let's try. Let's try a nice. Let's try a nice green. Some forest green. What do you think? Who am I talking to? <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, there's a viewer. All right. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that did work. And make sure the text is still legible. Not bad. I don't know. I'm not a designer. When my screen color isn't calibrated. I think it's okay, though. <clears throat> but yeah, we could give the uh, game player uh, a choice of background color. <laughs> so the screen doesn't resize, it's not dynamic in that sense. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know if people would like to, to work with the green background. Oh, and I changed the font size as well. Okay, well. We'll make these into a setting, but not during this.
So yeah, some people might want to chroma key the text background so they can overlay it or just clip it uh, or I don't know if chroma keying is even necessary. You can just clip part of the screen. user experience and accessibility this issue proposes the implementation of customizable background and for font color settings in the app this feature will allow users to tailor the app's appearance to their preferences and unique use cases such as optimizing the display for video overlays yeah font size would also probably be good Yeah, I think the font size would be a good uh, also feature in this vein. You know, you want to change the colors. Yeah, font size, toggle, sounds. So essentially, this depends on our general user settings feature. This is pretty good. Might not make exact sense, but nonetheless, here it is. Hmm. 
doing this in a little bit reverse order, but now we're going to have to have a menu navigation menu basically to get to the settings or a button that opens it up. Actually, that might be all that is needed for for starters. And then closing this, closing the settings, then takes you back to the main screen. That might be easier. In fact, you just hop into the app and immediately you're there. Uh, but the thing is depends on the purpose of this app which the goal is to have it as an educational tool so it would offer you some i mean you could start out right here like this and just play around with it and then have a settings menu up here and then a lessons or something up here like some kind of buttons or navigation to open up these choosers the problem is then how do we get the lesson back into the main scene i don't know But the main scene could have just a property lesson display. Hmm, interesting. Still doing these wrong header levels. Check these issues. Setting scene, background, finger number indicators, initial game design document, audio feedback. <clears throat> yeah, the lesson display is not so trivial. It combines multiple elements because it'll have some things you're supposed to play in a particular sequence but also it'll be tied into this piano because it should highlight the key and have uh, an indication of which finger to use. Look at this. So it plays over in the middle here. <clears throat> yeah, indicator of which fingers to use somehow because the fingerings matters, especially if you're going to arpeggiate.
what I just realized I'm needing to put this into the game design document. Maybe that's what I'll do. I will um, go ahead and merge this. We pushed everything that's here and get status. since the signals uh, sorry so utilize Google Godot's um, signal system for inner component communication for instance when lesson display indicates the next note it should emit signals that both the note display and piano display listen to and react accordingly user input validation the lesson display should listen for the input from the piano display or MIDI handler and validate it if it's correct notice played. So they'll have two way signaling. And add the preview feature so that it's important to the your ear that you hear and see things before you try playing them. It's just a way of ingraining the knowledge and making it more <clears throat> making it easier to learn. And tempo, so we'll need also the metronome feature, visual feedback. That could be a small feature request just to add a metronome, just to have it there. And showing the visual feedback, if you're pre pressing the right or wrong note, that will be pretty apparent. User interface. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Um, this is actually a really good summary. Probably would be better in the game design document. And without that, I really shouldn't plan too much of the backlog because I might be going down the wrong path. Go and merge this pull request. We've basically done it. Using the um,
I don't know how I'll work with it. I'm thinking Markdown, probably in the Docs folder. It's a great start, so let's just go ahead and commit that. Yeah, I'll put it in the um, docs. GDD.md. Oops, cancel that. Wait, what happened? Reload. Reload. Oh, heck, what happened? <clears throat> so you pull, it doesn't have the greatest Vs. Uh, I guess it had all, all the files open, so something happened when I pulled everything down. It was the same files, but uh, a little bit of a shuffle. <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> Let's see if it pops back up. Panel practice, GDDMD. Oh my goodness, that's not what I was trying to do. If I would go hover to the edge here, oh yeah, look at that, it snaps it to those other ones. All right, so then we're gonna do create a branch. Yeah, check out. Add the game design document. Here we are, and we'll just open docs folder and put the, I suppose, new text file, but I don't want it that dot, dot txt, right? <clears throat> All right, any mark, markdown in there? Oh gosh, oh my, yeah, that was right, that was correct. <clears throat> you do, yeah. Game design document. The first time you use the phrase, you don't abbreviate it. Game design document. Whoa, it's got a markdown editor. Interesting. Very nice. All right, appendix and references. Oi, Kesty. I don't know that we want to keep track of the date here. This is looking pretty good. Not a lot of horizontal scrolling here. So it's kind of seeming like a, we'll have like a custom JSON format. It would be cool to use like Muse Score and maybe notate these, but it would add a lot of complexities, I think, such as like the note duration and stuff, when really this is just about 
patterns, recognizing and ingraining patterns and not necessarily particular rhythmic patterns, but actually just the, uh, the key, the spatial patterns of the keys. I don't know if we need the numbers there, but uh, So yeah, it's a bit, it's a knowledge and a muscle memory tool. So it's just built in. I think we're pretty good. It's uh, All right, core learning goals. So it would be nice to have like a little tool that handles all these kind of like heading level stuff and auto numbering and links. But right now I'm just gonna work in raw markdown and get this thing in the project. So we know kind of where we're going. I think it's a really decent game design document. So let's just go ahead and commit that. Committing that. change that uh, <clears throat> open a pull request I suppose ready create that well, I got a couple of messages here I should probably hop off and uh, check my my conversation one more thing I want to do is just add a um,
So timing matters. Yeah, see, it has just some really high precision timer built in. Very good. And some of these would be low hanging fruit we could uh, easily pick up in another session. Um, for now, I think that's all that comes to mind. Let's go ahead and merge this game design document pull request while it's fresh. Merging that. So, yeah, if you'd like to check out this project or Good O Garden, Piano Practice, there it is. But coming along, we've got the basic idea and communicating that publicly now so other people can kind of get on board and know what we're trying to achieve. Uh, but again, this is a very nascent project. So we've got some several discussions open to um, get feedback and help steer the project, help do some research, uh, <laughs> choose a mascot, and uh, craft the initial game design document. Here's the draft. I should actually link that here whoops <laughs> meant to do this and then back and then here's the initial draft work in progress gdd wip gdd Very cool. So yeah, this was just a kind of a brief session, just getting in here, doing a little bit more work on the game today. It was kind of nice, leisurely Sunday. So yeah, thanks for stopping by the live stream. Hope you're doing well and have a great day.